All right, gang, we're going to go for a short ride today. We're just going up to the park. We're actually going up there. But it's kind of a long way around to get there because there's a river between here and there. You can't just go straight over there. Um, we're going to talk about a couple of things. One being the compass on this and what I have discovered as to why it doesn't work. And the other uh, being my camera setup. So I want to do some things a little bit different coming up this year with my camera. And I'm not a camera savvy person. I just kind of rigged some things together that just happened to work and that's what I've been using. Um, I use the GoPro Hero 4 mounted to a Karma gimbal and that's how I get my stabilization. Uh, the GoPro Hero 4 has really good audio compared to the later cameras uh, due to them not needing a waterproof housing. Uh, this one does, so it's not waterproof at all. But the audio that I'm using is probably only good up to about 20 miles an hour and then it starts kind of sucking. So that's why I'm going kind of slow today. That and I have to ride with my face shield open in order to speak. Because if I close it, then the audio sounds like this, and the camera, or the helmet starts banging against the camera on top of the gimbal because it sits really high. So I'm looking at two different options, really, uh, and I'm not sure which one's going to be the best to go with. And that's the, you know, the latest, whatever the latest GoPro is on the, at the time I go to buy. It just mounted straight to the chest rig without the gimbal because they, now they come with like horizon lock and uh, good dis stabilization and stuff like that. You don't really need the gimbal for what I'm doing. Uh, the other option is a 360 camera. The Insta1 360 X2, I believe, is the newest one. And that seems like a pretty good camera. And I like the fact that if I see something over there, I can just, in editing, I can you know, pan over to it. You guys can see what I'm looking at or what I'm talking about or what I want to point out without having to, like, you know, me move over or grab the gimbal and try to uh, point it over there one-handed. You know, this way I could do it all in editing. But the problem I have with the 360 cameras is I, I hate the, the appearance that everything's in a fishbowl. You know, and so you got to kind of zoom in or crop in to the image to get rid of that quite a bit. And I don't know how... Uh, much clarity or you know distortion I'm gonna get cropping in that much to get rid of all the fishbowl effect uh, nobody else is really doing uh, motorcycle vlogs that way and so I can't really ask anybody another option was the DJI Osmo pocket 2 camera which is a small basically a small version of what I've got strapped to me right now But uh, it's got some limitations just like this setup is, you know, has that I'm wearing right now. But it does have a, uh, a wireless microphone that I could put inside the helmet. And so I think that would be kind of cool, but it's wireless. So with like, if I had the GoPro uh, 9 or something like that, I would have a wired lav mic on. That would uh, alleviate that problem. And I don't want to go with a helmet cam. Uh, most people use a helmet cam, but I hate watching helmet cam videos because people are like me. They're constantly turning their head looking to see what's around them. And if you guys are watching, you know, through our chin, basically, the camera can be swinging around wildly and you guys are, you know, trying to watch it or like trying to make heads or tails of what's going on with the camera being moved every time I turn my head. Uh, so I, I really want to avoid the the helmet can just because I don't like them and I don't think they put out great or make for a great uh, viewing experience I think the stabilized version you know what you guys are seeing right now I think that's some of the best POV footage out there let's get up this hill so the two I'm really leaning towards like I said is the uh the Insta 360X2, because I can move it all over the bike anywhere I want it, really. I don't have to just mount it to myself, because it sees 
360 degrees, and I can run a lavalier mic to it. Uh, same with the GoPro Hero 9. But the GoPro only looks straight forward. And so I've got you know, those two things to contend with. The GoPro looking straight forward is going to have better image quality. Uh, you know, so the high def and all that's going to look better on the GoPro than on the 360. But uh, the 360 is 360. It's not just looking straight forward. I can pan around and show different things. So it's not just a static forward looking shot. So those are my two big you know, contenders right now that I'm looking at. And price wise, they're pretty much a wash. I'm going to spend 600 some dollars on either one. Doesn't matter which one I get. So that's what I'm looking at. If you guys have any thoughts, because like I said, I'm not uh, a camera expert. I'm just throwing stuff together, you know, throwing things at the wall and hoping something, hope something sticks. And that's how I got this to work. So if you guys have any expert opinions or anything like that, feel free to leave uh, comments below and let me know what, I should, what, what else I should be looking at. And I see you, uh, no, not you, the other one, yeah. I see you about to click the like button. Go ahead and click that like button. Go ahead and do it. And the subscribe button is right next to it. So go ahead and hit that too. Because the channel is actually doing really well. It's exceeding my uh, goals that I had set. Because there was like three, uh, I don't want to say gateways, but there was like three barriers I had to hit before I can go and, and do this sort of thing full time, go off travel and film these adventures and things like that full time. And I've reached two of them. The third one's the biggest one, but the two, uh, the first two barriers are down. So we are doing well. And I thank all of you guys for that because that's not me doing that. That is you guys doing that. And so I really, really appreciate it. And we're heading back here where I did the accessories video because I want to get out of town away from electrics and things like that. And we're gonna set up and look at this compass. So let's see what's going on with this thing. All right, so we've arrived out at the park, and one thing I didn't mention is I do have this little Session 5 camera that I use every now and then. Uh, I just haven't had a good mount for it, and I still don't. This one, you see, it's got some play in it. But I want to get a good mount for that so I can move it around the bike and do different shots and things. But if I get the 360 camera, I won't have to worry about that. Uh, let's go over here for a second. And hopefully you'll be able to see behind me. That's town down there. I'm back up here in the park. And actually my iPhone is sitting in a gimbal. I do like the gimbals because they allow me to get some really cool shots. Uh, some of my like off the bike footage comes from that. So I think I've got that covered. I'm just looking for the more action shots. You know, which way should I go with the GoPro or the 360 camera is where I'm going for that. So let's get to this compass and see if we can figure out what's causing the problem here. So the motorcycle is facing basically due north. If I look at this little compass here. So we have a motorcycle facing north. Now, if we walk over to the bike and turn it on and pay attention to the compass, it says we're facing west and that north is that way which is not true. Now also on the dash, I've taken one of these little ball compasses and set it up here. If we look at it, it's saying southwest. And we know that's not true either. So we just checked and I know I'm facing north. So something is off here. And since I've got two compasses, and in fact, a third one in my pocket that I could put up here and they would all three actually read incorrect. So I know that the compass in the Himalayan is actually working. It's not working well, but it is working. Let's get rid of that. Because this thing in the instruction manual says it can be off by 45 degrees as a tolerance. And that's a quite a wide swing for a compass to be off. So not a great navigational tool if it is even working correctly. But I got a lot of replies from people who heard that my compass wasn't working right, wanting me to calibrate it or try magnet tricks and things like that. And I've tried all of those and none of those have worked. So, and I appreciate all the help that you know, people offered, but what we're gonna do now is we're gonna get back up 
and pull out that other compass again, my little Silva navigating compass, because that is telling me, let me center this, since north is that way, it's telling me that actually north is this way, back into my right. And so that means something in this direction, if I walk towards the bike with this compass, we should start picking up a weird magnetic field that's going to change the north on this on this compass and we'll figure out what is attracting the compass on the dash so as we walk up here we'll just watch the needle and see what it's doing okay see now it's pointing towards the fuel tank it just suddenly took a turn let's back off again and it starts taking a turn right there keep moving Now it's pointing back this way. So in this region, there's something magnetic that is throwing off the compass on the dash. So the red arrow is pointing towards whatever it is. So right in this area right here on the right side of the fuel tank, I have some weird magnetic field going that is overriding the compass on the dash. So it's not the compass itself that's at fault. It's not out of calibration. There is a magnetic field on the bike right here that is throwing that off. And so that's why my compass does not work. Not a big deal. Um, it would have been nice if that would have worked, but since it don't, I'm not worried about it too much. I might stick like a my Garmin Instinct watch over that or something, you know, in the future or some Velcro or whatever. Because other than that, it's just basically now I have a decoration on the dash. And since I know it's not nothing or anything mechanical wrong, I know it's actually in some interference with some magnetics in this area of the bike is actually the problem. And that basically renders that useless. So I end up using the compass on my phone if I need a compass. So there it is. That is what is wrong with the magnetic compass on my Royal Enfield Himalayan. So short, sweet video. And I will catch you guys next time. Take care.